some photos. I just want to show you some of the bridges I took up there. And you'll notice these bridges obviously are very long, both of them, based on the width of the stream or the river or the creek or whatever it is. And a lot of them have names on them. And you notice that these, they're not really, you know, an exciting building, other than the fact that now they're nostalgic and they're old and they've got a lot of character. I spoke to a, a person up there whose grandfather was a bridge builder. Brush mark is where you're coming up here and you leave the line of the brush. 
you know, when you're streaking it like this and you see where the tip the color just leaks at the brush stroke, it's what you want to see. That's what makes it look like an oil painting or an acrylic painting. Which by the way, this can be done in either medium. These techniques are almost the same no matter what. Alright, as you go across, just keep adding the gesso, a little bit of turquoise, a little bit of ultramarine. Just work your way on across. Just kind of feather over the edge of your barn. I mean your uh building. Now if you wanted to put some little soft whiskey clouds in here at the end, you can do that. No one's saying you can't, and it's not going to ruin the painting by any stretch. And we may decide to do that, but we just don't want a big, complicated sky, because this painting's got a lot going on in it. We want to take good care of our composition. Just keep working your way across. Just a little more turquoise. I want it to be a little on the turquoise side over here in this corner. I just love that turquoise color. I just think it's fabulous. Okay, now I'm cooking. I don't think we can get everything blended nicely here. Now, I don't always paint blue skies. It, it, I like them. I do. But I like a little more color and action. But in this case, you have to use good common sense. And what we're trying to do here is create a little bit more subtlety and softness. Now, still, I'll tell you what happened to you folks, and I don't like confessing this. I got a little too much water in my brush. Here's one thing you've got to remember to do when you're painting, especially when you're using bigger bristle brushes. If you had any water in there, it gets sucked way down into the metal ferrule. And sometimes when you tip it up, the water drains down back into the, the bristles, and, and water comes out, you don't even realize it's happening. That's what happened to me. So it makes the paint a little thin. That's why you get see the little brush marks. You can see those if, if you could, and you know, you'll see them in your paint. But all I'm going to do is add a little gesso to absorb the moisture. So all I'm going to do now is just take the gesso, I'm going to come back up here, I'm just going to go back through and just kind of thicken up the paint that's already on here. These are the little tricks of the trade, if you want to call them that. I won't take this anything and paint the trick, because it's not. They're just good, solid techniques. But nonetheless, if you don't know what you're doing and you need this information, keep these things in mind as little helpful hints when you get into these little problems. And it's not that it's a real serious problem. But it bugs me, so I want to fix it. You know how it is when you're an artist. Someone else may like what you're doing just fine, but you hate it. That, that happens every week at my studio when we have classes. People are always saying, oh, I hate what I just did. And I walk around saying, man, that looks great. You ought to leave it alone. But I hate it. Well, artists are like that. We're, I hate to say this, but we're kind of chronic whiners. And I have a wine club. It's kind of a funny thing at my studio. And I'm always looking for a new president of our wine club. You know what I'm talking about. Any of your artists, and have been for a long time, know that we constantly whine because we're always wanting to paint better, and that's a good thing. So, always be encouraged, challenge yourself to do better, but don't give up and get discouraged if you're not doing it as well as you want. It takes time to be an artist. Now, while that's still wet back there, take your number 10 bristle brush just as it is, don't clean it out. Come right down here, a little purple, a little hooker screen. And you create this nice, that sort of a grayish color right there. It's kind of on the grayish green side. And we're going to block in our first level of very distant hills, trees, brush. And right now, I'm still deciding whether to turn this into an early fall or a late summer. I don't know yet. But anyway, take this color because this is your first value that sets the stage for your depth. So be sure you're working up into. The background. See, because it's still wet, it now works like an oil painting at this point. So you can blend right into this background. Just scrub along here. Feather it. See how soft I'm making that? You want these edges to be extremely soft. Very feathery. Scrub it in. Right in back here. And I might mention something else I'm going to do a little bit more in this painting, and sometimes I do, even though I do it all of them to some degree. I've had a lot of people write lately and ask about more impressionistic techniques. Well, impressionism simply means just that, an impression of something. So what we're going to do here, I'm going to show you some things like these trees. See, these are true impressionistic techniques where you just scrub. You don't have to 
to sit there and make every perfect little limb, every perfect little leaf, every perfect little whatever. You create the suggestion by doing this and you treat your viewer. Let me just say something that I've mentioned this many times before, but it's still important. Your viewer, the human mind, the human eye, is smart enough to figure out that those are what? Without me even telling you, you know what those are. Those are trees. They're just back there in the distance. We've all lived in this life long enough to know that off in the distance, when you see shapes kind of like it, those are trees. So because of that, you're able to get away with not making it, quote, photographic or perfect, unless you want to. Artistic license gives you the ability to do anything you want. Now, many, many years ago, when I worked a lot with, you know, the wildlife, in the wildlife field, and I still do some, we had to make things very kind of photographic and sort of the, you might say, standard procedure. Well, I got tired of all that detail and photographic realism. Oh, it makes you feel good that you were able to make something, you know, you had the skill to do that. It lost something in the translation, you know, interpreting something and making it look like a bird when really you don't have to put every feather in place. Just give it some flair. I see how those are. I saw this in trees. Those look like this in trees. And now we're going to come in with our lower layer, that's value one, probably about five or six value changes in this painting. I'm going to switch that to my number six bristle brush, so I'll have a little more control. Now at the very base of all of these, you'll have your next level of value. Stick in the same area here. I see here's a good example. Make sure all that moisture gets out because it will drain down in there and get too wet. All right, a little more green, a little more purple, maybe just a little greener this time. Needs to be just a little darker than what we had. Yeah, there we go. And what I'm going to do here is just put some darker base trees along the, the back of it there. You can even turn your brush sideways. Just kind of smush in some nice little shapes. Now, it also gives you a little different color change, which I kind of like. Now I'm getting ready to do something that's going to scare some of you, but that's okay. A little fear is good. Okay, and we've got that just a little dark over here. I'm going to light that just a little. Okay. Now that gives us a little layer of depth. Now what I'm going to do is there's a larger tree I want to put on the left-hand side. So now I'm going to take a little bit of the green, the purple. Maybe a little burnt sienna this time to warm it up some. And are you ready? Stab it just like this. Right up there on the canvas. And that's what you're going to make your closer up tree with. And it's going to, again, you can make that just a little darker. Now this, this one will have a little more of a tree shape to it, and it will also have some limbs coming up on it, you know. So, but we're just going to tap it in there and kind of branch it out a little bit. We'll deal with it a little bit later. Just keep remembering what we talked about. This is underpainting. That's all it is. all it needs to be. And then next week, we'll do some more underpainting, and then we'll finish up. And there'll be some trunks coming down here that will attach to the ground, of course. All right, now then, well, that's kind of setting up there. That's kind of a neat little shape. And I like all the brush strokes in it. Now, back here where the road meanders, you have to have some land masses for it to fit into. So now we're going to go down and go to the number four bristle brush, which I've got it right here. See, these bristle brushes get a workout. The four, uh, six, and ten, sometimes number two, really works good for, you know, all different kinds of things. So. We want to keep those sizes handy. Now then, in the very background, we want to create a mustard color, which will be yellow, green, and orange. 
maybe with a little yellow in it, and a little bit of white, just kind of make it a little more opaque. See that little mustardy color right there? Now this will be sort of the hillside that will set the stage for the road that we're going to put in right here. See that soft, beautiful mustardy color? These, these kind of go back to some of those tones we used, uh, some of the other things. Well, especially nowadays, they like these earthy tones. Some of you, if you're into the Tuscany scene, you know, that's been real popular lately, these last two or three years. There's these real golden mustardy colors are really important. Okay, now let's see. This is going to come across. There might be a little bit back here uh, on this side of, of the bridge. Probably not tons. So I'm not even sure how we're going to manage this yet over here. We'll just have to wait and see. But that'll be just a little hot spot there. Okay, that's good. <laughs> Now, on the right hand side, right in here, now because the water's coming through the bridge, really because of the perspective where we're standing in relation to the building, you can't really see the water on that side, probably at all. Don't think now. So that'll just be the brushes, the brush coming up from the base, but there will be the banks coming down, and you'll see some of that. So let's get the banks, let's take a little umber, a little bit of purple. A little bit of white, and you can even pick up some of that greenish gray. And right here, <laughs> just model this in. Now, this is where, folks, I'm telling you, this is going to get exciting. You talk about the impressionistic strokes, the suggestion of things that aren't really there, and yet it looks like it's there. And I know all of you have done this. Go to a museum or a gallery, and when you walk up close, if they'll let you, a lot of times they won't, but if you can get a little close, take a look. You'll see how sloppy and brush strokes it is. And then you notice when you get back, the average viewing distance for a painting is about six feet. And sometimes that's why they put uh, little ropes up so that you'll get back not only just to keep from touching it, but to also give you the proper viewing distance. Now, see, I'm putting a little bit of a mix of warm and cool. So I'll go back and a little bit of blue and purple. I'm just modeling in, see little brush strokes, little brush strokes there, and you can eventually make it look a little bit like the eroded banks and um, rocks and things. Okay, now right in front, there's a little section left. This will be the area that's on the back side of the drop off where it goes down to the water. We'll put a darker bush right here that overlaps this area. So now you go back to the hooker's green and the purple, and you make it darker. So now you see your value system in place. Now let's count this. It's really exciting to me. Value 1, right here. Value 2, value 3, and value 4. Then we get right to the foreground of these value 5. It'll get much darker. But this is the little bushes, the brush, whatever you want to call it on the back side of this. Right here. <coughs> back up the road here that enters the building. All right, now then we've got that kind of blocked in. Now let's go to this side. We have to do a similar thing on this side. See, the, the road comes out and then it goes up in through here. See what, let's go ahead and block in that road just so we'll have it, so we can see it. Really all we're doing today, guys, like I said, underpainting, kind of drawing with your brush so you kind of get some perimeters. Take the orange and the white. And that orange and white will give you a clean color to work with. And that's what I like to block my, when you're doing a distant road like this. Normally you would paint a little darker. But this gives us the, you can see it down in here. So this will come out of the building and come back and meander back around there. Oh, it looks kind of cool. All right, now this section, just to the right, this little V-shape right there, that's got to be something, grass or meadow or brush, whatever. Just come back down here in this gray-green area. Um, 
chance to edge out the road so that it looks good there. And then as it comes around the bend right there, kind of another drop off right there. I'm going to make a little blue and brown. Folks, I know a lot of you are sitting thinking, how are you seeing all this stuff? Well, one of the things I want to remind all of you about painting like this, this is called ad living. It's just pure and simple. When you've painted so many paintings over the years like I have, and you've studied the landscape, you understand composition and design and perspective, you can pretty much just start from nothing. And just from memory, put together a beautiful painting. And that's really all I'm doing. And you can start with a sketch that's all detailed and laid out for you. But I've learned over the years that I don't have to be that careful. And sometimes it's more fun to kind of let a painting develop. Get out of the habit of copying. Because when you copy, even though you can do that to learn, and I did too, just don't get in the habit and keep it going. All right, see, there's a little shadow there on this side that will turn into something in a minute. Now, this area right through here is the large bank that drops down into the water. So we want to go ahead and get that finished. So we take the blue and the brown and the purple. And I'm going to try to get that block in here. And as usual, checking our time. We're about to make the main. We're already running out. But this is just brush strokes. See, I'm doing this. You can just get this blocked in. Respect to the blue, the brown, purple, and, and it's always a little bit of white just to keep from getting too dark, obviously. And the brush strokes are critical. They are necessary for this to look like rocks and stuff later. And you might make it just a little darker with a little more blue in there. Just right up against the edge here of the building. And right underneath there where the arches are, where we have this color, just go ahead and fill in that little arch right there with that dark color. And this one has two arches. Well, you might as well do that. And also the door up here, fill it in nice and dark too. See, I'm moving quickly, but that's what you want to do when you do this kind of thing, folks. You want to move quickly. No, not that necessarily you're in a hurry. Even though we're gonna always kind of in a hurry on the shows, that's not the point. The point is, the quicker you paint, the better and fresher your work will look. So just block this in nice and dark here. Now I'll take care of that. Okay, well, the clock, the clock is ticking, and we are gonna have to slow down here. But if you can go ahead and get this much blocked in, I'm gonna block this little section in here too, real quick, and that's where we'll probably end it. Just, uh, and make this one just a tad bit lighter just because that's going to be the sunlit side eventually. But this is that area where we're going to have the rocks and the wash and the eroded bank. Look at all these beautiful brush strokes, man. I love this. 
Oh, you're going to be amazed. You guys, right now, if you're shaking your head thinking, oh, I'm not going to watch them next week. Those of you that have been watching for many years, you know what's going to happen. But if you're new, just give it a couple more weeks and you'll be hooked. Well, I want to thank you for joining us today. It's been a lot of fun bringing you this wonderful painting. So God bless you, stay inspired, keep painting. I promise to see you real soon on another session. Thank you.